Hey, hope you're doing well. My name's Steve Burke. This video is going to be all about the right hand, and today we're talking about the floating thumb technique. We're going to talk about what it is, what are the pros and cons of using it, and then we're going to talk about why I shifted from anchoring to floating thumb, kind of back towards anchoring actually. I sort of do sort of an in-between, and there are specific reasons for it. So first of all, let's talk about what is the floating thumb technique. The floating thumb technique is kind of the opposite of the anchoring technique. Most bass players are taught to put their thumb someplace solid like a pickup. Anchor your thumb and your fingers play the strings and your thumb maintains contact with the pickup. So what are the advantages of the anchoring technique? The advantages are pretty clear. You have a real solid contact with the bass. Your hand does not move. Your fingers kind of play above the thumb. And when you get used to the distance that you're traveling away from your thumb, you really get a good sense of where you are on the bass. It's really kind of a comfortable thing after a while. You just can just reach up and you know exactly how far to reach because your thumb is not moving. So this is a great technique, and, and most bass players learn this way. I certainly learn this way. The other approach is the floating thumb technique, which is what we're going to talk about in this, this lesson here. The floating thumb technique can be a couple of different things. Sometimes people refer to it as a movable anchor. So when they say floating thumb, what they really mean is a movable anchor. So for example, if you're playing the low E string, you might anchor here on the pickup, but if you're playing the A string, maybe you move your anchor up to the E string. And as you go up, you're moving your anchor, but you're still kind of anchoring. Your, f your thumb is floating in that it's, you know, moving, but you're still kind of anchored somewhere. The other kind of floating thumb technique is where your thumb is not anchored at all. Your thumb is kind of just resting against the strings or against the body. That's more of a true floating thumb because you're really not using your thumb to guide your hand much at all and you're, and you're certainly not anchored anywhere. You're not um, stuck somewhere. So for this lesson we're going to talk about both but we're still going to kind of refer to both of those as the floating thumb because the advantages to both are pretty much the same um, and depending on the shape of your hand you might find uh, one of these styles of floating thumb a little bit easier than the other. For example, I have kind of these like hitchhiker thumbs and so that makes resting the finger on the string a little bit more comfortable for me just the way my hand is shaped. Your hand, your thumb might be more straight and you might find it easier to just rest the floating thumb against the strings in this way. So let's now talk about some of the cons associated with the anchoring thumb. So when your thumb is always anchored in one place it can limit the amount of tone that you get out of your instrument. And the reason for that might already be obvious to you. It's because if you're dependent on an, on a, on an anchor, be it a thumb rest or the neck or the pickup, it means that you can't really comfortably play in between the anchors, right? So say, for example, I wanted to play back here close to the bridge, like Jaco. Uh, it's a little bit difficult because I'm so... But, you know, if I'm an anchoring player, I'm so used to anchoring that I really need to have some somewhere for my thumb to go or my technique doesn't work. This is eliminated if you have the floating thumb because the floating thumb is not dependent on any anchor. The floating thumb can just move around freely. The other disadvantage to the anchoring, and this is one of the big reasons why I stopped anchoring, is because your hand changes shape as you play up the strings. So let me demonstrate. When I'm playing here, my, my hand looks like this. When I'm anchored here and I'm playing the E string, it's very, they're very close together. As I move to the A string, my hand shape becomes a little bit wider. And as I move up, my hand shape, <laughs> my hand shape becomes even further apart. So when I'm at the G string, my hand shape is totally different than it was before. You see? I don't know if you can see that, but now in order to play that way, my hand is really open. So when you're anchored, 
your hand changes shape and your attack changes based on which string you're playing on. One of the things I love about the floating thumb technique is that my hand can stay the exact same shape whether I'm playing on the E string, the A string, the D string, or the G string. You see that? My hand is always like this, which is very, very, very comfortable for me. It's about this shape. So that makes a big difference when it comes to consistency across the strings. I know that if my technique is good on one string, I don't need to make any adjustments in order to play very clean on the other strings. All I have to do is just sort of shift and my hand kind of takes care of the rest. And it's very, very comfortable. One of the other disadvantages of playing with the anchoring technique is that when you change instruments, it can be quite difficult to adjust to that new instrument. So if you get really used to having your thumb in one place, say on this Music Man style pickup, this location on the bass doesn't exist on a jazz bass. On a jazz bass, you have a pickup here and you have a pickup here. So in that case, your hand shape would change. Your whole approach to the instrument must change be just because the pickup is in a different location. I found that in my early days of playing, that was a big disadvantage because I needed to have this instrument. I, I played exclusively this instrument and where that pickup was really mattered. And whenever I went to play somebody else's instrument, it was really difficult and I had no chops because my hand shape was different. I didn't, my technique was built upon this pickup. So I'm gonna talk a little bit now about my history with the floating thumb and the anchoring. So I mentioned before that I used to play exclusively with an anchor. And I also mentioned that I played this instrument exclusively for a number of years. I'm in my 20th year of playing the bass now, which is hard to, hard to believe, but I've been playing this instrument for 20 years. For the first 10 of those years, I anchored. And for the last 10 years, I've done the floating thumb. At a certain point, I got interested in playing a six string bass. So the six string bass has such a wide neck and the strings are, are so big. There's such a big distance between your low B and your high C that if, you, if I were to anchor on the pickup and play all the way up on the high C, that problem of my hand changing shape is now very severe. I couldn't do it. There's just no way my hand is big enough to do that comfortably. And that type of big motion in order to play all the strings is very, very difficult. So I sort of adopted the floating thumb kind of by necessity. Um, the six string bass is kind of an unwieldy beast for some people. One of the big challenges that we have as bass players is to keep the instrument very quiet. To not let the lower strings ring out when we're playing higher. In other words, to not let some strings ring out unintentionally. And with the six string, that process of keeping the whole instrument quiet becomes a lot more complicated. The floating thumb is a huge advantage because not only does it allow you to access the upper strings, it also is silencing everything below where you're playing as well. So I adopted this true floating thumb where my thumb just rested against the strings and I could play freely up and down like this. And it was really, really comfortable. I played six string for about four years. And then when I came back to the four string, I was so happy to find that on the four string, all the work that I had done to develop this floating thumb really made it a lot more comfortable to play. The four string all of a sudden became almost exactly like playing the six string. Um, my technique didn't need to adjust at all because with, with my floating thumb technique, I could adjust to any instrument really, really quickly. You see, because the floating thumb is just a little bit more adaptable to different styles of instruments. So I found that it was a huge advantage um, as I began to explore different types of four string basses. First, I went back to this one and then I started playing Fender style basses, um, but I I, I just found that having that floating thumb was a real advantage for me. So that's my journey with floating thumb versus anchoring. I found that once I had adopted the floating thumb, 
I really didn't want to go back to the anchoring. The anchoring didn't really provide much of an advantage for me personally at all. I think if I had much bigger hands, the changing shape problem wouldn't be so, so big of a deal. I have pretty big hands, but I think if I had much bigger hands, I could anchor very comfortably. Um, which brings me to my next point, which is that I think mm. the floating thumb technique is a terrific technique if you have smaller hands. And one of the reasons is, it doesn't really matter how big your hand is if it always stays the same shape. So if you have smaller hands, the base maybe will seem a little bit smaller because you no longer have to reach and stretch to play with your right hand across all four strings. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are different approaches to the floating thumb. Some people move the anchor some people do a real flat thumb, and maybe there are different techniques, but I'm gonna talk about exactly what I do. So I'll break it down by what I do on each string first. So when I play on the low E string, I either anchor or rest on a pickup, but I really don't need to. My thumb can be totally free, and I can play very, very accurate and clean without anchoring anywhere. And my thumb is just here, it's just floating. Okay. Now when I play the A string, my thumb rests very gently on the low E string. I'm not, I'm not anchoring. It's not like I'm on the pickup and I really need to, to have it anchored there in order to pull on the A string. My fingers are doing the work to play the A string and my thumb just needs somewhere to go. So I put it here on the low E string to keep it quiet. Now when I play the D string, Usually I keep my thumb here on the low E string. That's a little different from some players who would shift to the A string to play the D string. I find that that's, that doesn't work so well for me. And I usually play between these two strings so much that if I was just constantly shifting, it's a little excessive. So what I, what's comfortable for me is to play the A string and the D string anchored on the low E, very, very gently, and I can move that around. Now, when I go to the G string, I shift to the A, I shift my anchor to resting, again, gently on the A string. So in order to play that G string, I've shifted my hand a little bit. And this way my hand stays the same shape. Now, now that I'm here, if I were to play the D string from this position, I wouldn't shift. But as soon as I go to the A string, I'm back to the low E. You see? So the D string is sort of in between the two positions, and I can play the D string from either position. So that's basically it. It's definitely a feel thing. It's definitely something that I didn't think about too much, although I think about it a lot now, but I didn't really have to think too much about making it my style. I was just playing a lot and it kind of developed out of necessity. But now that I have it, I can really see the advantages of it. Um, and I like my technique, you know, there are things that I'm still working on with the right hand for sure. But this gives me a really nice, um, comfortable way of playing across all the strings without ever really feeling like I'm stretching, I'm not doing any big mo movements with my arm. It's all very small. And here, I'll play a little bit, and you can see um, just how little I actually move my right hand, hopefully. Um, so yeah, I'll just, I'll just play a little bit and just maybe just watch my right hand a little bit and see how I'm moving that thumb around.
that's it for this lesson. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit subscribe, like, and uh, leave me a comment and let me know what your technique is like. We're all different. I really hesitate to use the words better or worse. Anchoring is not better or worse than floating thumb, but uh, I found my own technique, my own approach, it just works better for me. I would not be surprised if anchoring works better for you. Um, but I hope that this video was useful for people who maybe are just starting out on the bass and have never heard of the floating thumb technique. Or if you've been playing for a while, um, you know, maybe it's helpful to hear somebody's thoughts about how to approach the floating thumb or how you could use elements of the floating thumb to alleviate some technique problems in your in yourself. So that's it. Hope to see you in the next one. Take care.